likely out for the season with a partially torn ACL that will require surgery. Dinwiddie's absence means first-year head coach Steve Nash will need to now rework their starting five. Big Perk joining us now for this upcoming debate. But, Dominique, I want to start with you here. Do you think that KD and Kyrie can overcome Dinwiddie's injury to still reach the NBA Finals? Absolutely. I mean, Dinwiddie's a great player, obviously. He hasn't been playing all that well so far this season. But I think that if he hurts their team, what it hurts is maybe they have to move Karis LeVert up because LeVert is, the, is kind of the leader of the second unit. They're six men of the year kind of candidate, and I think that's important to have that offense. But everyone's going to have some injuries in this season. We know they've had the shortest offseason in NBA history, so it's going to be rough on a lot of teams. It just so happens that it happened to the Nets early. Other teams are going to take some some hits and lose some players at different times of the season. And if you're going to lose a player, I think, or lose a type of player, that is the type of player that I think they can come back from losing because they don't need another ball handler necessarily. They don't need another scorer necessarily. They have that covered between KD and Kyrie and, again, Levert. And I think they would be hurt much more if they lost one of their better shooters like Joe Harris or something like that. I think this team is going to be fine. They still, in my view, are going to end up being the best team in the East when we get to the playoffs. Dominique, I can't believe you. The disrespect to Spencer <laughs> Dinwiddie, now I got to address you like the numbers on the house. Because here's the fact of the matter. Spencer Dinwiddie is a 6'5 combo guard, a big guard that plays great defense, always shooting the passing lanes, getting steals. That's on the defensive end. When you look at him offensively, offensively he's a guy that could play with the ball in his hands and facilitate for others, and he could play off the ball. He's an underrated facilitator for, for his playmaking, and last season, he finished at the top of the charts in isolation plays, meaning that either he was getting the bucket or, or getting the assist for the bucket. He's clutch. And I last time I checked, I haven't seen a team that have won a championship without having a big three. And Spencer did what he makes up that big three. Although he did get off to a slow start this season, let's not forget he's still an all-star caliber player. And we have to remember that. So when when you look at the production that Spencer Dewitty brings to the table, they can't replace that. And I hear you talking about putting Karis Levert into the starting lineup. Okay, cool. But you're taking away the depth from the bench. So who's going to yeah. be that no, guy I that comes in off that. the bench yes. to get you to? No, but what I'm saying, they have no choice. So with that being said is, I think we, 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 uh, we, discredit or don't respect Spencer Dinwiddie like we should. He's an all-star type player and, and, and it's just mm. they're going to miss him and I don't see the Nets making the finals without Spencer Dinwiddie. So, on one hand, I agree with pretty much everything Kendrick just said. Um, you know, the point about the depth is really smart in particular because if they do move Levert, that's a huge loss. It's funny how quickly, right, teams going, like at one point the Nets look like the, de the deepest team in the league and it's amazing how just one losing one player erases that. They could trade for a guard. By the way, this puts them out of the James Harden sweepstakes, which is an important factor in all of this. That's no longer an option if it ever was. Um, I also agree about the importance of Dinwiddie in particular because you want to have the option of playing Kyrie either on or off the ball. Steve Nash prefers that and you lose that optionality. All of that is true. That said, the question is can they reach the finals without Dinwiddie? And I still think they can because they're in the East, Perk. Now, if they were in the West, I would say, hell no. Yeah. Okay? But because oh, it's, they're it's in the okay. East, because of the level of competition there, and because of how dynamic Katie and Kyrie is, are as shooters, I still think they can reach the finals. I can't believe I'm agreeing with the NFL yeah. player over the NBA player here. <laughs> uh, it feels really no, wrong, but I'm going to do so it. So, Kendrick... Kendrick, Kendrick has showed up today dressed like Suge Knight on the cover, cover of Vibe, and you let him intimidate you a little bit, so you gave him a lot of credit that he didn't necessarily deserve. He obviously knows basketball he's also so close better. To the he, he, knows, he knows he's very close. It's intimidating the way he's le giving that Debo lean. It's intimidating. But it's obvious he knows more about basketball than both of us. But I think you can be too close to a situation, and I think you really respect. 
I think you you respect Spencer Dinwiddie a great deal, and we all do. We all know he's very good. But if the question is, can they get out of the final or get to the finals? So now you think that they're dead to in the, the world. They can't get to the yeah. finals. You're you're yeah. You're willing to cross the nets off the list today because of that. I don't think that's the case. Other people are going to get hurt. Other people are going to have issues. And that's no disrespect to Spencer Dinwiddie. It's probably better for them to have this happen at this point in the season as they're still building their team. Yeah, but we can't go off if other team, if other players are going to get hurt yeah. on other teams because right. if if was the fifth, we'll all be drunk. I mean, I'm sorry for your loss if you choose to <laughs> roll with Dominique when I'm sitting up here dressed like a pastor trying to give you this this great gospel this morning. <laughs> and what I'm telling you is is that when you look when you look at look at the Brooklyn Nets, just look at the Brooklyn Nets last two games, okay? When KD and Kyrie did play against the against the uh against Charlotte, all right, they lost that game. Spencer Dinwiddie played 15 minutes. I guarantee you, if Spencer Dinwiddie didn't get hurt, they would have won that game. When Kyrie and KD are not having out, when they're not having uh great shooting nights or not producing well. Spencer Dinwiddie is that guy. We have to remember, he is he built this culture with the Brooklyn Nets. He made this team relevant again. He made this team eye candy. He was the one performing at a high level. GMs rave about Spencer Dinwiddie. Spencer Dinwiddie is a starting point guard in this league at 6'5". You don't find right. big guards right. like him that plays both ends of the floor. I know I'm right. I'm just trying to explain to you why I'm telling you you are wrong and Mina is wrong. <laughs> that the East is not weaker. The East has I gotten better. You look at you look at the Milwaukee Bucks, they're better. The Miami Heat, they're still there. The Boston Celtics have got better. You can't count out Toronto. God knows you don't want to count out the Indiana Pacers. So what I'm saying is, yes, Kyrie and KD are phenomenal. We all know this. But you still need that third option guy that's going to deliver with a high IQ in Spencer Dinwiddie to reach that goal of going to the finals. Even the Lakers had it. They had playoff Where, one, though. Do the Bucs have it? Him. Yeah. Who's the Bucs for the guy? Yeah, the Bucs don't have it. But I, I just like that that he just said that they're worse than Charlotte now because then Whitty got hurt. Now they're worse than Charlotte. Okay. I didn't. I did not. I did right, not. We're say making that. all these statements. It's so early on in the season. Anything can happen. We really have to set our expectations high for any team, you know. But also, guys, Spencer Dinwiddie. He also um, had an ACL tear back in college. It was his left ACL during his junior year at Colorado. This time around, it was his right. But he has success in healing these injuries. So again, we wish him a speedy and successful recovery. And Perk, Perfect. we only get you for one segment again. It's too bad, but we love having you as always, and we'll see you soon. Thanks so much. Appreciate it. All right, guys, much more to come. Need to now rework their starting five. Big Perk joining us now for this upcoming debate. But, Dominique, I want to start with you here. Do you think that KD and Kyrie can overcome Dinwiddie's injury to still reach the NBA Finals? Absolutely. I mean, Dinwiddie's a great player, obviously. He hasn't been playing all that well so far this season. But I think that if he hurts their team, what it hurts is maybe they have to move Karis LeVert up because LeVert is, the, is kind of the leader of the second unit. They're six men of the year kind of candidate, and I think that's important to have that offense. But everyone's going to have some injuries in this season. We know they've had the shortest offseason in NBA history, so it's going to be rough on a lot of teams. It just so happens that it happened to the Nets early. Other teams are going to take some some hits and lose some players at different times of the season. And if you're going to lose a player, I think, or lose a type of player, that is the type of player that I think they can come back from losing because they don't need another ball handler necessarily. They don't need another scorer necessarily. They have that covered between KD and Kyrie and, again, Levert. And I think they would be hurt much more if they lost one of their better shooters like Joe Harris or something like that. I think this team is going to be fine. They still, in my view, are going to end up being the best team in the East when we get to the playoffs. Dominique, I can't believe you. The disrespect to Spencer <laughs> Dinwiddie, now I, gotta, now I gotta address you like the numbers on the house. Because here's the fact of the matter. Spencer Dinwiddie is a 6'5 combo guard. A big guard that plays great defense, always shooting the passing lanes, getting steals. That's on the defensive end. When you look at him offensively, offensively he's a guy that could play with the ball in his hands and facilitate for others, and he could play offensively 
off the ball. He's an underrated facilitator for, for his playmaking. And last season, he finished at the top of the charts in isolation plays, meaning that either he was getting the bucket or, or getting the assist for the bucket. He's clutch. And I last time I checked, I haven't seen a team that have won a championship without having a big three. And Spencer did what he makes up that big three. Although he did get off to a slow start this season, let's not forget he's still an all-star caliber player. And we have to remember that. So when you look at the production that Spencer did what he brings to the table, they can't replace that. And I hear you talking about putting Karis Levert into the starting lineup. Okay, cool. But you're taking away the depth from the bench. So who's going to yes. be that guy no, that comes in off that. the bench yes. to get you true? No, but what I'm saying, they have no choice. So with that being said is, I think we... we